Well, I got a bunch of stuff in the mail today, and uh, some of it doesn't really deserve like a whole deep look, and others of it I'm not going to get to you know, for a little while until I can do some testing, and it's going to be a few weeks. And and some of it <laughs> just came in such a nice package. I thought it's a shame not to show it to you. So I'm going to do just a little quick product update on the stuff that came in the mail today. Uh, so this is the X-Racer F303 V2.1. And the major difference is that now the, the buzzer, the current sensor, the RSSI sensor, all these things that used to be pads now have their own through hole. So that's nice. And just for comparison, here is a V2.0. And you can see that here are the buzzer pads right here in case you haven't gotten one. And of course you can't solder to that. You wouldn't solder. I mean you could solder a wire to it, but you're not going to solder your buzzer to it. Okay, let's, uh, these are RG20 Plus ESCs from Rotor Geeks. This is the new F390 version of the venerable RG20. Looks a lot like an RG20, doesn't it? I can think we can expect that it will perform as well as the RG20s. RG20s have always been known to be able to really soak the amps. They're rated at 20 amps, but they will do more and they will shrug it off. Uh, so, so these have always been very good ESCs. They're a little big to fit on the arm of many copters, but a lot of pilots fly them without a complaint. So uh, very happy to put these to use. This is the naked version, which I think is very nice for a lot of pilots who are going to build a certain way. Uh, they come without the motor lead soldered, so you can solder the motor straight to them. And they have a piece of heat shrink pre-cut, very convenient. I don't know, I can never find this size of heat shrink. I never seem to have it on hand, so there it is. So there's the RG20 Plus. Essentially, it's an RG20 Plus, and now it has an F390 processor instead of an F330, which is the new sort of normal, I think. This, this, I have to think, and I'm not going to call him out by name in case you get embarrassed, but actually, I screwed up. Uh, I, I have multiple people who are sending me batteries for testing, and I got the wrong viewer. Uh, the viewer who sent this battery in is Viking FPV. He has a YouTube channel and I'm very sure he would love if I sent some traffic his way. So go check out his YouTube channel. Thank you Viking FPV uh, for sending me this battery for testing. Really appreciate it. And uh, there'll be a link to his channel down in the video description if you want to check it out. A viewer on my channel bought this and sent it to me. Look at the packaging. This is a Hobby King 1500 milliamp hour graphene pack. Uh, notice that the new shipping uh, rules are in. It's shipped at 30% charged when return to storage charge ASAP, they say. I don't know how important that is, but there you go. I guess it's lower than it really needs to be and they want you to top it right up, which I will be doing is I got this today. As soon as I finish this video, I'll be putting it up at storage charge. Never you mind, uh, generous viewer who sent this my way. But look at this package. At first, I couldn't figure out how to open it. Do you push this through and slide it out? No, no, that's not right. Look at this. You're not going to freaking believe this. It's a freaking magnetic enclosure. Can you... <laughs> what is this? It's not, it's not a piece of jewelry. Oh, oh my God, it gets better. <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I took it out of the box. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's a little bag. <laughs> oh, I cannot freaking believe it. Oh, Hobby King! Oh, Hobby King! What, the, what, what are you doing, Hobby King? Are you kidding me? It's like it's a freaking box of Crown Royale. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, dare I even. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I almost didn't take it out because I was like, oh, never. It's a battery. You guys don't need to see that. I'm so glad I did. It comes in a freaking bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's the. That's. that's <laughs> the magnet box. The magnet box was bad enough. But no, then we're going to put it in a bag, too. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, get, it, get it together. Get it together. These these are some motors from Rotor Geeks. They're the, uh, the 2700. KV2205. Uh, I'm really excited to try these. Um, and I was really impressed with the packaging. And I was legitimately impressed. And I know. Listen, uh, 
<laughs> you, you, who cares about packaging, right? You're going to take it out of the package. You're going to throw it away. You're going to bash the motors. You're never going to see it again. But <clears throat> what does this packaging really cost Rotor Geeks? Like a dollar at most. So you pay. You already paid 25 bucks for the motors. What's a dollar? And it is nice when you pay $100 for a set of motors. But you know, you get a little bit of class in the packaging. I don't know. So uh, check this out. Mm, okay. Oh, very nice. <clears throat> oh, okay. And, oh, and in fact, if you look, you can see all the lab all the logos are turned the same way. It's very nice. That's very nice. So I, I'm really looking forward to trying these motors out. Actually, the the RCX2205 motors on my QAVR are pretty bashed up. I, I had that whole series of videos about the vibration mounting uh, some time ago. And um, it, the copter still flies okay, but especially since I built the... Mixuco and put the same motors on it. It's a really clear just how much of a difference there is and just how beat up those motors are So I thought maybe I'll put these on my QAVR and I'll do a side-by-side -side between the brand new 2205s on the Mixuco those are the RCX motors and uh, And these motors so we'll do some we'll figure out some kind of testing or something. good excuse to justify Rotor geeks having sent me these motors. Thank you very much Rotor geeks that's it. <laughs> That's it. You guys have a good night. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, and as always, happy flying.